illicit. I didn't see mom as a hardened criminal, but as someone who was very sick. Regardless of my perception, the police were catching up with her, and she was arrested for forgery, theft, and fraud. A search of her apartment revealed that she had changed my birth certificate to read 1942 instead of 1972. It was a slapdash effort and was highly noticeable. I knew she was manic when she did it. She did this to many people, opening bogus credit card accounts and maxing them out, annihilating the victim's credit. The police asked me to testify against her, but I refused. I was told that would be the only way to clear up the damage she had done to my credit, but I still declined. The criminal justice system wasn't a solution for mom, but after a long investigation, she was arrested for a final time around 1995. Sadly, we were still getting into countless quarrels. Nothing was off limits, and personal attacks were every day. We had various run-ins, and each time seemed to reinforce the fact that she wasn't taking her medication, and that made me furious. When confronted with the constant smacking from too many prescription pills, she would say she had just eaten peanut butter crackers. Nobody believed that lie. I wouldn't be a crutch for her, especially if she refused to get better. What was I thinking moving back into the lion's den? She was basically forced to move back in with her parents in order to avoid lengthy jail time. It humiliated her, but made me feel encouraged for her future. Steve asked me to marry him on our one year anniversary. He had spent a lot of time planning it with my mom. She chose the restaurant and the ring. Generously, mom gave him a beautiful diamond ring to give to me. He could not have afforded a ring that size on his wages. On his knee, with tears in his eyes, he placed the heirloom on my finger. I enthusiastically said yes, but I had one worry, finances. I called Social Security to see if remarriage would affect the survivor's benefits Kira and I were receiving. I was told I would lose financial assistance immediately. Steve and I both worked minimum wage jobs and couldn't afford to be without it. We couldn't get married. I didn't like being unmarried, especially when so many women fawned over Steve. The administration couldn't stop our hearts. Rings in pocket, we dedicated ourselves to each other in the back atrium of our family church. Kira chewed her thumb as Steve and I expressed our commitment to each other and exchanged rings. Thankful to a helpful platform for single mothers, I was offered a loan and bought a small house with a white picket fence. We were officially settled in, and our home was literally picturesque to me. The topic of suicide was finally fading becoming less of a dominant factor in my life. We were living happily. Life for years was akin to living in Beaver Cleaverland.